Okay, we're gonna have a little look at the power that's needed for our standing tuck backs. Um, and I will have a little talk about um, improving our standing tuck backs. So that they're so secure that they're really ready for show hard floor work. So the first thing we're gonna practice is the power through the legs. It is imperative that you push through your legs as hard as you can. And you've got to use the floor for that, that compression through the floor and that push. So the very, very, very first thing we're going to practice is exactly the same as what we've just done with the flicks. So Hattie is going to lay on the floor, down the floor hat, and she's going to have a pillow. She is going to lay down. Can you move back a little bit, Hattie? Because a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Stop. Lovely. So lay down and she's going to put her feet on that pillow. And to really, really, really work on feeling how your legs need to push through the floor. You need to imagine that the pillow is actually the floor. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna push very, very, very hard through your feet and push the pillow away as hard as you can. Ready? One, two. Well, you went on one. Should we try again? One, three. Ready? One, two, three, push. Now, as you push through your legs, it's also important that you push through your arms. So, we're gonna do it again. No, arms by your, by your hips. And as she pushes through um, through her, the floor, through her feet, she's going to slam her arms up. And that is because when we're tuck back in, we have to block. So as we jump in the air, the first shape we should see is a stretch jump. Lots of you show me this shape, okay, which means you haven't blocked first. So the idea of having the, the floor behind you means your arms have got stuck somewhere, which is exactly how the block works. You have to imagine that there is that wall or that floor behind you and it's stopped your arms at the top. Okay, so as Hattie pushes through her legs, she's going to have her hands by her hips. And as she pushes, she's going to push her hands hard back. One, two, three, push hands. Just like that. Thank you. And we want you practicing that home so you feel how it feels to push through those feet and how it feels for those arms to block at the top. Get practicing. Okay, another way of practicing our blocking is to get the is to get a tuck jump, but it needs to show all the technique to help us with that tuck back. So I'm going to ask you to stretch up. I'm going to ask you to bend. I'm going to ask you to jump in the air when you and your arms are going to come up. Now, if you can slam your arms up hard, that's good. Once your arms are up there and you're in the highest point of your jump, you're going to stab your legs into a tuck. Okay, no soft tuck. Really, really stab that tuck. So arms up, bend the knees, jump into the air, once you're at the very top, tuck. And again, I don't know why I did it, I had nice soft arms. I don't want soft arms, I want stabby hard hands. So up, down, slam, tuck. Okay, that's the shape I want and I want you to do at least 10 of them three times. We want as many as possible. Remember, Imagine the pillow is underneath you and you're shooting that pillow. Imagine your arms are stopping on the floor and then stab those legs in. And that is the absolute ultimate way to get that tuck back. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again, but this time we're going to do it laying on the floor. Reason being, we still need to get those arms slammed and we want to get the extra rotation of the hips. So a tuck jump, our hips stay square, they stay under ourselves. When we start looking at tuck backs, we have to rotate those hips as well. So they have to do this action for us to be able to rotate over. So we're going to practice it on the floor. I'm just going to move you back a little bit, Hattie, so we can see you. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, and this way a bit. Hattie's going to have her hands by her hips. She's going to slam her hands back. Tuck, and then rotate. Let's do it slowly first, Hattie. Come back down. Arms down. Slam your arms back first. Slam. Oh, oh whoa. Was that a slam? No. No. Listen, one bit at a time. Arms down. Slam your arms back hard. Good. Tuck your knees in. Rotate your hips. Good. Keep in a tuck shape when you rotate your hips like this. And this is the shape we're aiming for. Okay. Let's try it all together slowly. Arms down. Arms back. Knees. Hips. Good go. Good try. And you can see how your stomach doesn't quite attack that shape enough. And you need that shape and that attack to be able to get over in that tuck back. So if you struggle to get that up, up straight away, get this practice over and over again and work those stomach muscles. Do me one more as fast as you can. Arms, arms, knees, hips, Hattie. Three, two, one, arms, knees, hips. Good try, did you knee your nose? Oh, baby. Okay, okay. the home. very middle bit, I can't practice with you at home safely. Um, if you feel safe enough to do it on your trampoline, have a go at doing it off a surface, you can. I'm not going to encourage this because it's not completely safe without a coach nearby. So what I'm going to do now is try and work on the 
um, the landing, stop banging hats, land on that on the landing of how we're gonna land that secure tuck back. Now it's all about having a strong core. You shouldn't be tuck backing unless you've got a strong core, because if you've got a wobbly body in the middle, all that's gonna happen is that you're gonna land awkwardly, you're gonna hurt your ankles, your knees, different parts of the body. So you must make sure you're a nice, nice tough body. So we've found a surface, we've actually got three of our IKEA mats. You might be able to find your bed um, or a sofa. And Hattie's going to lay down with her neck off the end of the of the um, of the surface. Okay. Now she's going to bend her knees in, and then we're going to use that rotation that we've been practicing, which is lifting the hips. And then as she goes over, she's going to look for that. Well, she's not going to look for the floor. She's going to try and keep her head in. Okay. And then we're going to see if we can get to the floor. Ready? One, two, three. Over. Land. Finish. Finish like this. Okay, and we're really aiming to keep that head in. So, although Hattie's neck was off the end of the surface, she wasn't looking back. Many of you, many, many of you, even the ones of you that think you can stand in tuck back, drop your neck like this. Okay, and if you drop your head, all your rotation is incorrect. You haven't blocked first. So, it's imperative that you practice that, keeping your head in as you rotate over and get to that floor and then land in that position. Um, have a have a friend, have a parent to record your tuck back and look at your yourself. Stop yourself in the middle and look to see where your head is. It's imperative that that head stays in and stays neutral. I'm not really bothered if it's here, but it's definitely got to be neutral as you make your way over. If you're if you're slamming that head back, um, then you're not doing it right either. So really, really practice these practices. Okay, the other big issue we have with standing tuck backs is the way we start that position. So there are lots of you that like to do this. And you drop your body down and you swing your arms hard down. If I'm in this position and I need to get all the way over, rotate and land, I'm making my rotation much more difficult. And it's not producing that power to go up. It's producing the power to fling back, which then just becomes a soggy low tuck back. So what I want you to look at is your, your, your takeoff position. As we take off, we should have our chest up slightly forward, but definitely not in front of your knees. Okay, up, down, chest up. This means that your block can happen before you tuck back. So again, get someone to record you. Take a look at that shape. Are your um, shoulders in front of your ankles? Um, are they up straight? And are you getting that stretch jump before you start tucking? They're imperative to good standing tuck backs so we can progress these on to standing twisting things and double backs and various things like that. So really, really hone in on your technique now while you've got the time. Get practicing, let's see some fantastic tuck backs. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is our hips. When we are jumping up in the air, some of us dip our hips like this, okay? We don't wanna see that shape, we wanna see this shape, watch. And my hips are slightly pushed forward, okay? Up, then down, then as I jump, I push those hips slightly forward yet again, okay? Push the hips forward. The reason for this is this allows my rotation to go up and forwards to get that lovely rotation. If my hips are slightly further back, Again, look at my rotation. It's got further to get around because my bum's sticking out. So tuck that tummy in. Okay, think of all that ballet head technique work we've done. Tuck that bottom in, push those hips forward slightly as you go for the jump. And that will just help that shape a little bit more. If you're someone that can tuck back, the best thing you can start doing is start working onto small surfaces. Start at the bottom and then add the surfaces to get higher and higher because then it doesn't matter what surface you're on, you can tuck back anywhere without any kind of push or bounce through that floor. So we wanna start you tuck backing onto a surface and getting that surface higher and higher. And that really will show that you're using the correct leg power, the correct technique. Get practicing, I can't wait to see it when we're back in the gym.